All right, looks like we're live, Pete. Recording the webinar now. Thanks everybody for hopping on. Um, my name is Josh. This session today is how to do rehash like a top 50 remodeler, strategies to increase your close rate seven to 10%. My name is Josh. I am the marketing manager over here at Hatch and I'm pleased to be joined by Pete. Pete, thanks for joining. Yeah, glad to be here. Uh, good topic to cover today. So. Uh, I'm with Jump Progress. I'm the integrations coordinator over there. Uh, you know, dealt a lot with Josh. We just uh, built a partnership with Hash. So excited about this opportunity to kind of showcase that a little bit and, and talk about a, a really good uh, topic, I think, for everybody, kind of a, a sore spot maybe for a lot of people and, and, you know, get some insight into how we can better handle that. For sure. Yeah, we're really excited, guys. Uh, to share with you guys some strategies that the top 50 companies are are using today. Some of the top 50 companies that we're working with, Hatch, Job Progress, uh, customers here. Some names uh, that you're probably familiar with. Uh, these are folks that are doing a really good job with rehash that we're working with, uh, making sure they're following up on quoted leads. And we're going to talk through today the old way of doing rehash, you know, from, from 20, 30 years previously to now and how you can rehash the modern homeowner because uh, you know buying behaviors has changed you know we all know that um, so we need to adjust how we do our sales follow-up and our sales process and our rehash strategies so today we're going to cover strategies that uh, some of these top 50 remodelers are, are using today and it's working really well for them uh, we want to make sure we knowledge share we give you guys something to bring back to the business so just so we're clear on what rehash is, obviously you signed up for a rehash webinar, you probably know what rehash is, but uh, just a quick reminder on that, it's a follow-up to leads that have received a quote, estimate, or demo, or a scope of the product project, but did not buy. So on the right-hand side, this is just a, a video from Hatch of a Hatch conversation, um, but this is an example of a rehash campaign where Maggie uh, sent a note that said, hey, this is Maggie, customer advocate manager for Wonderful Windows. You didn't move forward with your project, Jamie. Any way I can help? And that's because the uh, lead did not buy, did not respond to that quote. Uh, and then we surfaced the objection here. And we're going to talk about ways that we can surface the objection and handle the objection today uh, in your rehash strategy um, and ultimately increase that close rate from 7 to 10 percent. So really excited for that today. Uh, I want to keep this webinar as engaging as possible. Like I mentioned before, hop in the chat, hop in the Q&A. Uh, today, I wanna know uh, as, as a first question here, how you guys, how well are you, are you guys doing rehash today from your perspective? So you'll see a poll pop up. We're just curious how you guys are doing rehash today. I wanna better understand our audience. I know we have a lot of remodelers here, uh, some roofers, uh, some siding companies. So uh, curious how you're doing rehash today, how well, uh, and uh, we'll make sure we fine tune that presentation. All right, so it looks like most of you guys are doing rehash today. Some folks are saying that it's working well for them. Some believe it needs improvement. Uh, Aperson says they don't rehash. Awesome. Well, you guys came to the right webinar because we're going to be talking about uh, how to improve that rehash process in your business. Yeah, I think historically. From a job progress standpoint, what we find uh, dealing with contractors and working with, with contractors, you know, is that we do have a bottleneck there at the, the rehash follow up uh, portion of the business. Right. So we're we're running a lot of estimates. We got our sales guys busy. They're out doing estimates all day long, uh, mm -hmm. you know, pumping them out uh, to customers. But then you know, how what is the what is the rate once we get to that follow-up stage of being able to actually go back and convert some of these people that may not be a one call close or may not be someone that we uh you know can get uh, you know in the first week or so you know do we just forget about them <laughs> and we look back in there and you know and look at that report from an aging standpoint and say man you know we've got a huge uh amount of wasted energy here or you know do we come up with an effective way to handle them so this is a great a great I, way to kind of showcase that and, and see some opportunity here and uh, maybe convert some of these folks yeah for sure and i think it's important to to first take a step back of um the old versus the new way of doing rehash which is why we're going to talk about that piece today 
Um, this will be the last you hear about our companies. Uh, Hatch, we're a home improvement messaging platform. We automate your follow-ups when somebody submits a form on your website, Home Advisor, Angie's List, Modernize, you name it. Uh, we put that rehash on autopilot as well as those appointment confirmations. So uh, we really help your entire business from a messaging standpoint, making sure you're constantly engaged with homeowners. And uh, because all these messages are all automated and run in the background, you only need to jump into the conversation when a lead responds. You'll get a notification of that. So you can use Hatch for those one-on-one -on -one conversations over text, email, phone, also those one-to-many conversations. So let's just say, for example, uh, there's a big hailstorm in your area. You want to message all your previous customers, letting them know uh, that you know, you're there for them to help them with their roof damages during a hailstorm. You can mass send out a text message to those folks. Uh, so it's really great platform for uh, both one-on-one -on -one communications, automated communications, and that bulk communication. And the best part is it's one workspace for your entire team. So you can share conversations, you can tag folks in uh, that, you know, let's just say, for example, you get an objection that you're not, you know, ready to handle at that point, and you want to loop in your sales manager, you can tag in your sales manager. So we really make it a really good collaborative selling tool. Uh, and we're really excited to be a partnered and integrated with our friends over at Job Progress. Yeah, just uh, to speak briefly about Job Progress, uh, Job Progress is an all-inclusive business platform. Uh, the idea here at Job Progress is to be the hub where you run your entire business from, where you guys operate out of, uh, you know, from the lead intake all the way through managing the project, you know, writing your estimates, writing your proposals, and then on into, you know, even invoicing and, and tracking your financials. So, uh, you know, the goal here obviously is to give you that one stop shop where you guys can go run the entire business, whether it be from your app out in the field, whether you're, it's your desktop in the office, but you guys are operating out of one location. Uh, all your information's coming in there, easily organized, easy to find. Uh, you know, we've got the CRM built in, we've got the estimating and the contract writing ability in here, digital contracting, all those things so that we can really streamline that process for you guys and, and give you back some of your day to, to be more efficient and, and do a little bit more with it. Uh, and, and one of the huge parts of this is our partnerships and our integrations uh, and being able to tie those tools directly to job progress. So, uh, you know, just kind of speaking on it, you know, this is, a, you know, job progress is all inclusive. But a huge part of that is that we are a hub for all of your integrations to plug in. And now Hatch is one of those uh, to automate, take a, a part of that process and automate it uh, as far as the communication goes with your customers specifically for, you know, follow ups and rehash and uh, you know, getting those campaigns automated so that we're not losing track of those customers and people aren't falling through the cracks as we move them through the workflow and job progress and we move them through the stages, uh, you know, of our business. Yeah, I love that, Pete. And just to quickly show you guys how that works. So obviously job progress is going to be your, your business hub. Uh, using the integration, you're able to actually pass contacts and their status, uh, where they are in the in the job progress workflow, and all their details, so you can personalize it. Like, hey, Josh, I see you're looking for roofing, or you've got a dog named Buddy, or something like that. So, like, we bring all that information over, including the status, to automate that messaging uh, inside of Hatch, and then from there, inside of Hatch, you can have those one-on-one -on -one communications, and in real time, conversation data and the conversation history is passed back over to job progress at the. Uh, contact and job levels. So you're able to have clear visibility into the conversations that your team's having in Hatch while also using job progress as that central hub for reporting uh, and managing your business in that sales cycle. So really excited to, to complete this integration. Uh, we just completed a couple weeks ago and this is our, uh, our first webinar together uh, where we're going to be covering rehash. And, and the reason why we're covering rehash guys is the folks that are using job progress and Hatch, um, they're, they're incredibly successful with rehash. Um, anywhere from seven to 10% increase in close rate when they plug in job progress and hash and implement rehash in their business. Uh, and so today we wanna share strategies that you can bring to your business today to execute on rehash, regardless of if you use our tools or not, we just make it super easy. Um, but I wanna make sure you guys come away with uh, actionable strategies to bring to your business with respect to rehash. So. Today, we're gonna to be covering the old versus the new way of doing rehash, how folks did it back in the day. Uh, it's not working anymore. So we're gonna talk about the new ways and, and how you should be approaching that. Uh, we're gonna go over some messaging tactics that are gonna get homeowners to buy and buy more. Uh, and the last piece is how to handle common objections, price, timing, product, et cetera. So 
Uh, you're in for a really jam-packed webinar today. So without further ado, let's talk about the old way of doing rehash. Uh, it's not working. Uh, so folks are, uh, sales reps are coming in with a really high quote. They're getting rejected and they're coming back and lowering the price. And some sales uh, organizations do not compensate the sales rep if the lead is rehashed by like an office admin, for example. So that puts a lot of pressure on the sales rep to one call close. And a lot of organizations are pressuring sales teams to do that one call close. So what that does is that creates an uncomfortable experience. I'm sure you guys have seen it firsthand um, in your business where the homeowner expresses you know, some concerns with the sales process, some concerns with pricing, and, and it's just an awkward experience for everybody. And the old way of doing rehash where you come in high and then lower the price, uh, it just isn't working anymore. Uh, folks are price matching every day when they go shopping for clothes, for example, at, at the store or groceries, et cetera. So they're always doing that. And, and when you come in super high and then lower the price, it, it's that attitude of, well, why didn't you just provide me this quote to start with? Uh, and there's certainly opportunities that you should introduce discounting for sure uh, and introduce different product options. And we'll talk through that. But at the end of the day, you know, coming in high and then lowering the price just isn't working anymore. We've seen it firsthand in our platform is folks that that have done rehash in our platform that way. It just isn't working. Uh, and so we're going to provide you guys with ways to do rehash the quote unquote new way um, to provide a better customer experience and homeowners uh, trust your brand and your business. Yeah, I think we find the same thing, uh, Josh, when we see it on our end, you know, mm -hmm. is, is a lot of folks immediately look to set up some type of discounting. How can I uh, offer discounts? How can I put discounts into my estimating? Uh, mm -hmm. You know, and they sell themselves short, right? They're they're looking to discount right away, right? They're, they're Like you said, they're kind of taking the old approach of, hey, I'm going to throw this in there, but then I'm going to try to sell this product by acting like I'm cutting them a deal and throwing them discounts on top of it, right? So, uh, you know, and then like you said, you're you're fostering a situation where the customer is thinking, hey, why didn't you just give me this price up front? Like, why does it always have to be discounted to get there? And, uh, you know, we, we see it quite often that way as well, done that way. So, uh, you know, definitely a new approach would be great, you know, and, and like you said, there are definitely situations where uh, discounting is a big part of it and, and can actually play to your advantage. Uh, but to, to take that philosophy going in just to try to close it in one shot so that you can avoid the rehash process uh, isn't necessarily the best uh, approach. Yeah, for sure. And, and these are a few quotes that we pulled directly from um, responses from homeowners. Uh, why didn't your rep give us this price on Friday? Some Robert from Chicago said, working with a <clears throat> window dealer, excuse me. Uh, you guys are 50% more expensive for the same product. We went with somebody else. So this is an example of a, a savvy uh, homeowner from San Diego that was clearly price matching and saw that, you know, the price that the rep came in with was way too high, like uh, egregiously high, 50% more expensive for the same product. And they ended up going to a competitor. Uh, again, your rep sat on the couch and did not leave until we gave an answer. That uncomfortable experience that I mentioned before not good. It's not going to fly anymore. And the most egregious of all, um, this is not coming from the conversation we had. This is actually coming from my coworker's wife. My coworker's wife uh, was uh, getting quotes for siding, had somebody come over to the house. And on the quote, the sales rep put the word one legger and passed it right over the table and handed it to her. I, I, it's just unbelievable. We were talking about that, Pete. It's just like, it's ridiculous. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'm not sure that's a great approach <laughs> in any situation, uh, essentially calling out a customer more or less. Yeah. And it's, it's not, and, and again, the old way of doing rehash is that is, is causing that uncomfortable experience because you're, you're coming in high on the quote or, or you're pressuring a rep to do a one call close. So the reps are going to be, you know, incentivized to just sit around the home and try to get the deal closed as quickly as possible instead of providing like a nice, relaxing, comfortable uh, experience for for the for the for the lead and the prospect. So, I I just want to highlight these quotes because this is something that we see a lot uh, when it comes to the home improvement sales experience. So again, like the old way I mentioned, there's a lot of pressure for the one call close. It causes an uncomfortable experience for the homeowner. 
uh, in the new way. And, I'll, and today we're going to talk about the new way and how you guys can implement this in your business. So first step is the quote. You got to provide that quote. The next step is the follow up. So uh, you're going to follow up on that quote as part of the rehash process. So say you go in the home, you provide the quote uh, and you say your goodbyes. You want to make sure you follow up on the quote. And you follow up on the quote in a way that's going to, you know, be very consultative, uh, be you know very willing to help. Not as not not a high pressure scenario, because uh, you're really working a deal through that sales process and that sales funnel. And then of course you get the rejection, and you want to service the objection. So if you get rejected on the, the follow up or on the quote on the quote, you want to make sure you understand why. And this is when you start to become if you if you start your sales process in the home as a trusted advisor consultative, not, you know, a one call close type of mentality, you're going to be able to more easily surface objections and have the homeowner give you an honest reason why they're not ready to move forward. And they'll be willing to work with you. And we've seen this firsthand. If, if you just are, show yourself as, as a trusted advisor to the homeowner, you're there for them, and then you service the objection, they're going to be more willing to work with you as you work to handle the objection. So again, you want to develop that consultative relationship to create that comfortable and transparent homeowner experience. And we were talking about this earlier, Pete, uh, somebody who does the customer experience, different industry really well is Chick-fil-A. Yeah, Pete, a really good story about Chick-fil-A. So I, I want to hear it from you. <laughs> yeah. We, um, uh, not long ago, we posted uh, a question in a forum about uh, hiring salespeople and, and where do your salespeople come from? Who do you find being your most successful salespeople? And a very interesting topic uh, with a lot of feedback from a lot of different contractors. And, you know, one of the overwhelming themes that we found that really I found very interesting was the fact that a lot of these contractors are going outside of the construction and the roofing and uh, the remodel industry to find their salespeople. And, and one of the most interesting ones that I found was uh, a contractor who specifically said that he often eats lunch at Chick-fil-A and that he he scouts the, the folks working at Chick-fil-A because Chick-fil-A has such an incredible customer service training program. And he said that the fact that these people are trained so well to do such positive customer service really sets them in the right direction to building customer relationships and not being just a pressure salesperson, but being able to develop that relationship with the customer, which then equals a, a better sale uh, and a longer lasting relationship with the customer, you know, so you're, you're going to get more repeat business out of it. Uh, so it was very interesting. I thought that one that they uh, tend to venture outside of the industry to find sales folks and then train them up to, to be able to sell their specific product, but uh, specifically that they focused on uh, Chick-fil-A as being one of the, the largest producers of good customer service oriented uh, sales folks. So yeah, that's fascinating. And and when it comes to to rehash, it's it's all about you know even if the even if the lead says no or the homeowner says no when you're in the home, uh, it doesn't mean that they're saying never, right? Or they're not ready. So when you're following up and you provide that good customer experience in the home, uh, and it's no pressure, then you're more likely to be able to work with the homeowner on you know, financing options, pricing specials, et cetera, and they're be they're going to be more open to that uh, with you. So it all starts in the beginning. Um, but when it comes down to rehash and thinking about it in a new way of providing the good, good experience in the home, low pressure, it's all about the follow up. And this is something that Pete, you alluded to earlier, where uh, sales reps are jumping from job to job. They just don't have time or they don't make time more like it uh, for the following up on the quote. They just assume, all right, we provided the quote. If they get back to us, great. If not, yeah, whatever, there's there's more fish in the sea. But but if you actually establish a multi-touch follow-up in order to surface these objections, pricing, timing, product, you're going to increase your close rate. And we've seen it firsthand. So if you implement something like this in your business where on day one, right after the appointment, you text, email, leave a voicemail or call them. Day two, send a text. Day three, send a text and an email. If you do a multi-touch follow-up across text, email, phone, you're going to get a response you're gonna get the objection. And again, the idea here, going back to this slide, it's surfacing objections. It's not necessarily to get somebody to be like, 
oh yeah, thanks for the follow-up. Yeah, let me buy right now. It, it doesn't work like that. You're going to have people give you objections. In an ideal world, yes, we love that. I would love that. It would be fantastic. I wish I wish we could sell hatch like that, right? Like, oh yes, shut up and give me my money. No, no, it doesn't work like that. And so it's really important that you're using rehash to surface the objection and using that multi-touch follow-up in order to get folks to respond. So I mean, it all starts with building the team around it, Pete. And you, you talked, talked about this earlier with Chick-fil-A building a great team. And I think you can speak to this really well as, as, a, as a leader in your company. Yeah. And I think that this is a huge part of it, obviously, right? We want to we want to groom our people and foster that idea that, you know, by following up, we're not only being able to stay on top of the rejection and the and the objections that they could possibly have and be able to rebuttal those quick but we're also establishing that groundwork for a relationship with that customer and what mm -hmm. we find you know as we work with contractors every day is that one of the largest sources of repeat business or or business in general for these guys is the referral right so if you go into a house and you try to have one call close and you're pressuring someone and you know, that person now feels uncomfortable, the odds that they're going to go to their neighbor or their friend and recommend you as a, uh, a, a person to come in and do more work in their house is slim to none, right? Where if they feel comfortable with the process, they don't feel pressured, you're following up with them, you're staying on top of that relationship, they feel like you really care, right? And you have that uh, constant uh, contact with them, you know, they're going to be more likely to say, Hey, you know, this guy really cared about my project, you know, and yep. he really, it's this salesman is really taking the time to answer my questions and make me feel comfortable and not make me feel pressured. You know, I'm going to tell my friends about it. I'm going to tell, you know, I'm going to put it on my Facebook, you know, so everybody can see it, you know, whatever the case may be. And all of that stuff feeds business, right? It's going to feed future business, not only from that customer, but also from their circle of influence, right? So, uh, you know, it, it's a great way to, uh, you know, not only get your salespeople to land that business, but also build that relationship that's going to expand their business and land them, uh, you know, exponential amount of work. 100%. Couldn't agree with that more. Uh, so, so we have a couple tips that I think before we dive into objection handling, uh, that I just want to summarize what we talked about. So again, continue to follow up. So we mentioned you, you give the quote, you got to make sure you follow up, you, you start that rehash, you follow up with them. Uh, you may get somebody to respond, but we oftentimes we see inside of Hatch that somebody will just randomly go dark. Uh, and that's totally normal. So it's important to keep reaching out. So in Hatch, uh, we've got a mes messaging product that allows you to uh, schedule that follow up. Uh, so you can you know, always follow up the day after, two days after, three days after, whatever the case is. And using campaigns, you can just automate that on the fly. So it's important to continue to follow up, even if somebody you know doesn't uh, you know responds to you first and, and then just goes dark. Uh, the next is picking the right messaging, right? So I mentioned before that just because they say I'm not interested does not mean that, you know, the conversation's over. You you throw them in the dead pile in the CRM and say goodbye. That's that's not how it works. So you want to make sure you understand, you know, why they didn't buy um, and what they actually want or need. And if you develop that relationship early on in the process, like Pete was talking about in the last slide, if you develop that process with the homeowner, they're going to be more open with you uh, and be more willing to work with you. The next piece is iterate. Um, sales reps are naturally, naturally competitive, obviously. Um, so it's important. I see a lot of sales managers on the line here. It's important that if you find something that's working with respect to messaging and, and how you handle an objection, uh, that you keep using it and share it with your whole team, not just, you know, the one rep or whatever. Uh, and if it's not working, switch it up. So it's important to keep that open line of communication. Whenever you guys have your, your weekly meetings or daily standups, whatever you guys do in your business, it's important that you you communicate what's working in terms of uh, follow-up and sales follow-up and what's resonating with the homeowner. So now I'm going to jump into objection handling. This is something that uh, here at Hatch, we've got a lot of visibility in. We analyze millions of pretty much millions of messages a week. I, I don't know what the count was last week, but it's it's significant, especially now as people are moving more uh, virtually with respect to their appointments, setting and all that stuff. Uh, we're seeing a lot more use in our platform um, naturally just because of the, the COVID economy and uh, you know more and more folks are using Hatch uh, to execute on that messaging. So 
The first piece is pricing. Uh, it's one of the most common objections and it's the most common objection in rehash campaigns that folks are running out of patch. So you gotta be willing to negotiate the price uh, if it's something that you think it's, it's negotiable on. Um, obviously, like I mentioned before, don't go in super high and then discount significantly because most homeowners aren't buying it. I'd say like one out of 10 homeowners are actually going to be able to are, are actually going to buy that that approach the go in high and then go low uh, because they're shopping around for other competitors looking for different options they're a savvy customer uh, next piece is offering financing options there's a lot of great financing tools out there uh, here at hatch we partner with uh, with uh, hearth uh, they're a really good tool um, and uh, they allow you to finance somebody without needing to uh, actually uh, qualify them with a credit score. You can actually pre-qualify them without any impact to credit. So we like them for financing and there's a lot of other options out there. Uh, the next piece is special offers and discounts. Ideally, those special offers and discounts are already available on your website. Uh, so that way they're not just thinking you're providing them a discount or a special offer just for them, just to get them to buy. Um, and you know, they might, they might be like, like I mentioned before, why didn't you give me this price on Friday? So Again, these are uh, the most common objection and I'm gonna show you guys today how to handle those objections because we've analyzed all those conversations and have understood what's working and what isn't. Um, but I wanna keep this engaging guys. Um, how do you guys typically respond to price objections? So I'm gonna go ahead and start this poll, lower the price, offer financing, suggest different product options or stop working the lead. Uh, it's a multi-select I believe. So you'll be able to select multiple ones. I'm just curious how you guys are handling price objections today. Yeah, along the lines of that too, I just wanted to make a comment. Uh, we work with Green Sky and one of the things that Green Sky brought up to me, which I found very interesting, is that 80% of your home improvement projects over $5,000 are financed in today's market. So where I don't think that was the case, you know, uh, 10, 15, 20 years ago, now, a lot of your work that's being done in the home is being financed. So it's a great way to, uh, you know, back away from the sticker shock, you know, here and, and kind of uh, get away from that pricing objection by at least having that in your back pocket that you can offer that to the customer uh, based on the situation. Yeah, we're finding that the same thing. Homeowners want to finance uh, their next project. And I think, I think a study came out of, it was, I think it was modernized. Uh, they said it was like nine out of 10 homeowners want to finance at least some part of their next project. So it's, I mean, it's super clear here that like financing is, is definitely the future. Uh, folks are financing pretty much everything. I mean, you can finance, it, I, I th the possibilities are endless. So financing is definitely a good play here. Yeah. We're gonna talk about how to handle the objection there. I see some folks lower the price. Some folks suggest different product options and Pete, I'm really pumped that that nobody selected stop working the lead. That's excellent. Nobody's giving up, which is good. So. <laughs> that's, what, that's what we love to see. All right, I'm going to close that poll, guys. We find uh, what we find to be a really popular uh, option or approach in job progress is the um, what we call the good, better, best option, right? Where we're, these guys are going in and they're presenting uh, three options to the customer, right? And let the customer choose their price point, right? Like it, it gives them, it, it makes them feel like they're in control. You're not giving them a price and saying, you know, here it is, take it or leave it, or having to go back and discount it. You can say right up front, you know, hey, here's the good, better, the best options, you know, your choice. You know, each one's got its own price point. Each one offers its own financing. Uh, you know, Job Progress actually has done a really good job of uh, incorporating that into the contract process where you can offer that right up front uh, yep. digitally to the customer and allow them to read through the options and make that choice. And it's, you know, it's a huge part of the platform and it, it's a great tool to use, you know, to to sell these products to people like you see here, it's as popular as financing as a way to tackle these pricing objections. For sure. And I, and I find it in that it, that pricing objections come in three different buckets here. So um, on the left-hand side, we're just going to work left to right guys. Uh, and we'll talk through this uh, pretty, pretty briefly, but I want to make sure you guys get a, a good idea and a good playbook to bring your business. So, Oftentimes the, the most common price objection is it's too expensive. So in that case, you're gonna to wanna to make sure you're working with them to find a solution. Uh, and like like we mentioned before, Pete, like the good, better, best model. Uh, make sure you're providing them with the different product options, keep the negotiation open. 
Uh, and here's actually a response that uh, has worked well for us in our platform. And say, hey, I understand one of my jobs here is to find out how to make projects portable for all budgets. We can look at your project and see what we might be able to change to fit your budget. So again, that good, better, best model presenting products options that way is definitely a fantastic uh, way of handling that price objection. And the next is if you develop that relationship with the homeowner, you're going to pick up on clues like a customer is nervous to make an initial investment or they might mention that eh, I don't I, I don't really feel comfortable with putting that much cash down. That's a case when you want to offer financing, right? Uh, so make sure you're offering that financing, especially when somebody so the customer seems a little bit nervous and you develop that relationship with the homeowner. It's going to be a lot easier for you to to surface that and, and get established trust, especially as it relates to offering financing. So I got your message about your project. I can help our customers with low monthly payments to help with timing. Do you want me to calculate a monthly amount for you? So like, obviously you're not filling out the form, but you're going to give them a general idea if they were to be approved for say, I don't know, $8,000 and they have an average credit score of 740, something like that. You can just guess um, and just provide it, you know, it'll be in this range and then you can move forward to having them actually fill out an application. So again, let's make sure we're, we're keeping it easy, make it easy for the homeowner, give them all the information that, that they want. They're definitely shopping around. They're concerned about price. So let's make sure we're, we're providing them with a good experience with respect to that. The next piece is the competitor piece. It's a competitor play. You guys probably see it all the time. You know, they say, oh, I, I got a lower quote from a competitor. Hopefully they haven't signed anything with that competitor and you're able to actually go in and compare quotes. So we found it really useful to, for, for contractors to actually go in and, and I'm sure you guys have done this too, where you just compare quotes and say, oh, well, let's see where we can make the money work, right? So, hey, this is Matt, the sales manager, got your message about the other quote you received, but I wanted to compare quotes and see if that's something we can do. Are you open to that? So this is these are responses that are working really well. And inside of Hatch, we have this thing called suggestion responses. I'll touch on it in a bit. Uh, where you can actually, for your entire team, have automated responses uh, that you can just in a drop down select and click enter as you're con communicating with the homeowner based upon what uh, objection that they they have there. So that's really cool. So I want to keep this engaging, guys. Um, thanks for your attendance so far and responding to the quote. Uh, so I want you guys to write in the chat on the right hand side of how you would respond to this conversation here. So. This example is Chris from ABC Windows is texting the lead. They sent a quote, asked if they had any questions. This was all part of the rehash strategy. Again, Chris followed up and said, just left you a voicemail. I can get you a 15% discount if you're able to get your windows installed by April 30th. Would that be of interest? So incorporating financing as well as a limited time offer. Uh, and then the quote responds with, yes, but it's too expensive for us right now. So let us know in the chat. If you're willing to participate, just let us know how you would respond to that lead. And while we're waiting on that, Pete, Pete, what I'm um, put you on the spot, man. What would you say to this guy? <laughs> well, it's interesting. You know, one of the things that I wanted to touch on here is, uh, you know, working with some of our larger customers. Um, one of the things that I find, which is very interesting, is that these guys go in with approach of, you know, when they have a customer say, you know, maybe you guys are on the high side, you're too expensive. I don't think I can really work with you guys is rather than going in and, and dropping the price or, or trying to meet someone else's quote, these guys go in and they justify why they're the higher priced item. You know, they, they, you know, they say, yeah, are we higher priced? Absolutely. But yep. for a reason, we're using better product where, you know, you're going to experience better customer service. We're cleaner. We're more efficient. We're going to be on time. You know, our guys are professional. You know, all these things that set you apart from just the everyday guy that's going to go in there and try to undercut you, you know, and you got to justify yourself. Don't sell yourself short and just say, yeah, I'll drop the price to meet, you know, tank, you know, what do they call them? Uh, tank top Tommy or whatever <laughs> that's rolling in there and steal your business by undercutting you. Right. You know, the, these guys, you have to justify why you're the better company, right? And and why your work is better quality. And and a lot of times the customers would be more willing to pay a little bit more if they can if they have a good understanding of what they're getting. So, uh, you know, it, it's not always about necessarily negotiating the price as much as it is justifying the price uh, as to why. And I, I found a lot of the larger companies this is how they're handling it. They're not they're not going in and just saying you know, we're more expensive, take it or leave it. They're saying we're more expensive because, and these are the reasons why you should really go with us. 
I love that, Pete. They're just owning it. You know, if, if, if you believe in your brand that you are the best, then you will be the best. If you go into the homeowner and you say, yes, I am the best. You're going to be the best. <laughs> it's all about that confidence, that swag. I love that, Pete. Yeah, absolutely. It's just more or less justifying why you why you're charging what you're charging. Don't undercut yourself. Uh, you know, I hope everybody is confident in their ability to do the job and in their ability to sell. And if so, then be confident and explain to the customer why you're confident in what you're doing. Right. And that's really what sets you apart. And that's what I've noticed with working with a lot of these larger companies, that that's their approach. Their approach is just not really to try to match price on anything. It's just to go in and justify why I'm charging you what I'm charging you. Right. If that's a, a line item estimate and, and breaking it down and showing you specifically why I'm charging you this for, for this specific item or, uh, you know, explaining to you why my labor is priced the way it is, because, you know, you're going to get a white glove treatment and you're going to get a maintenance plan that goes on for uh, two years after we install the roof, whatever the case may be. Right. You need to explain to these people why you are priced the way you are, why your price point is where it is. I love that, Pete. Looks like we got a response from Johnny. Thanks for participating. Said, uh, we do offer no money down financing. We can also do your windows and stages, perhaps the front of the home first to make it more affordable. Do you want me to work up a quote for just the front of the home? I love that, Johnny. That's a good one. Anton says, great. I'm happy to hear that we are a company uh, that you would like to do business with. Can you help me explain what you mean by too expensive? These are really these are really good responses. I, I feel like I feel like we're on the phone with very seasoned sales reps. This is great. <laughs> yeah, we find uh, giving the customer the ability to what we call cherry pick, right, or or pick specific pieces of uh, your your uh, estimate is a great way to 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 land that business and and then actually have follow up business, right? You know, hey, I I can do my roof right now, but I can't afford to really do the siding as well. But you know what? Let's if you guys do my roof now, six months from now, I'll call you back. You can do the siding or whatever the case may be, right? And uh, we find that that's a really good way to present the offer to the customer and allow them the flexibility to choose uh, what they want to do and, and cherry pick off of that estimate. For sure, for sure. And and timing oftentimes goes along with financing too, because uh, timing can be related to. I don't have the cash right now, or I want to push back. Um, and oftentimes we've found that homeowners will push back the project just because they don't have the money in hand to pay for the project. Uh, not because they just want to hold off for any other reason. They just won't admit oftentimes that they, it's because of money. Um, Cause we're all humans. You know, we don't, we don't want to admit that we're, that we can't afford something. And that's just a tough situation. So again, if you establish trust from the beginning, you're going to be able to really understand and dig into that timing objection. Um, why, why is it a bad time? So there are two things that you can do. You can decide a more appropriate time to pick up the conversation, which is very common. Um, and then the next step is dig in further. And so we've seen financing, requote, reschedule, comparing quotes. Uh, you're just trying to understand why they have an issue with timing. Maybe they think that they need to do one part of the project first and then, or one part of their home first and then another part, when in reality they could do them both together. You could have two folks working on the house at the same time. Whatever it is, uh, it's, it's, under, it's important to make sure you're surfacing that objection, understanding that objection. So again, another poll question, guys. How are you guys responding to timing objections? I'm gonna go ahead and launch this poll. Again, these are just limited. Um, there's plenty of different ways to respond to timing objections, but these are just common things that folks will do uh, when they are handling a timing objection. And the third, the third piece, D, is something that a lot of contractors don't do, provide help with content. So if somebody's not ready to to uh, to do the job for whatever reason, it's important that you're continuing continually providing them with helpful information to make a good decision because they could say I'm not ready to do the job right now because of the simple fact that they haven't been able to make a decision or they don't know what they want for their home. Um, they don't know what product they should use. They don't know what type of siding do they want vinyl. What what it, what type of siding do they want? So it's important that you're helping provide that education and again, establish trust with your brand. Um, a lot of companies will be like, have a blog post on their website that says, you know, 
here is the be- you know the top five different siting project products and their value and compare and whatever. Um, those type of blogs tend to perform really well, especially when you use them as your follow up. We always encourage people to to provide those helpful guides or maybe it's a what to expect. What to to expect when you work with um, our company? You know, what type of experience will you have? And and step by step, and maybe a customer success story. Um, we call them that, but in your world, it's called a you know a case study or a homeowner experience, a testimonial. Uh, surface that up when you're talking to the homeowner as part of this rehash strategy here. So a lot of folks obviously look to reschedule. Some offer financing. Very few offer a limited time special, dating that. Uh, and then a few also provide helpful content. Thanks for participating. It was very interesting. Yeah, and I think this ties right into what we're looking at here, right? Uh, uh, if you're going to be rescheduling with the customer, you know, you're going to want to stay in touch. You want to want to have those touch points yep. to let them know you didn't forget about them. And when the time comes, you're going to be the first phone call because you're the one that stayed in contact with them. And when, you know, you're not necessarily pressuring them to reschedule, but you're just letting them know that you're still there and that you haven't give, walk, given up on them and walked away. And, uh, you know, they're going to reschedule for you. They're going to come to you when the time better for them and when the timing is right for them to, to execute the project. Yeah, it's Pete, we, we have a shared customer that uses, I think it's nurture timing as a stage inside of job progress. And when somebody gets put into that stage, which is, is, is this lead needs to be nurtured uh, because they have a timing objection and they're not ready. Um, it's something like that. It's either nurture timing or nurture something else, but it's a stage where we actually kickstart off a messaging campaign across text, email and phone that just surfaces up, you know, testimonials. It surfaces up product uh, information. Just keeping in touch with the homeowner over the next twenty days uh, until you know they're they're ready to to engage with you. And when they do engage with you and they say thank you, I think we're ready right now. You'll be able to get a notification from Hatch and say, oh shoot, yeah, let's let's talk. Uh, and then you can go back to the home and, and finish that quote. Yeah. So that's another powerful part of the integration. Yeah, absolutely. Great. So here's some more common timing objections, the hold off objection. I need to prioritize one part of the project or one part of my home over another. And then I'm shopping around for other quotes. So those are the three most common things that we see uh, holding off. We're going to wait until later. Uh, again, we can service financing here because uh, chances are if you're working with financing, you're able to actually offer zero uh, percent interest or a delayed down payment. Uh, so with that in mind that you can you can surface that up in the conversation because they can uh, they can wait to pay for 12 months, for example. There's a lot of companies that can give you the cash now, financing companies that will actually give you the cash to, to, to do the project uh, for the contractor, but the homeowner doesn't have to pay for 12 months. So that's always a, a good incentive there. The next piece is prioritizing. Uh, so again, we can say we can finance it uh, so you can get it done and defer your first payment, or we can follow up in six months and rework your quote. What do you think? Again, that that you know, delaying that conversation, but making sure you're following up. Uh, the last piece is shopping around. Uh, we're still collecting quotes and are not ready to make a decision. So uh, this is a time where you can really showcase your customer service and give them give them a tease or a, a sneak peek of what they can expect uh, when they work with you. So in the meantime, you may want to check out our blog. We have some things that you might want to consider when looking at quotes. Here's the link. I'll reach out in a few days to check in. Would that be okay? So uh, the shopping around is is very common too, uh, and this is a good time for you to just showcase your brand. Say, yeah, I, I totally makes sense. You know, not trying to get get in the way of, of your decision making process, but I want to encourage you that that this is how we do things, and this is the success that our customers are having with using us as their preferred roofing provider. For example, um, you know that's that's a great way to do it and surface that. Yet along those lines, I worked with a customer out of South Carolina who had a great approach. And what he did was when he had a customer who essentially gave him the shopping around, you know, or or we're going to, you know, wait till we get some other quotes is he would actually go in and he would find some other jobs that he was doing in their neighborhood or in their general area within a couple of miles of their house. And he would send them by. He would say, hey, run by this job and look at this job we're doing. My guys are there working right now. Go by, check it out. You know, see how clean they are, right? Let's see, see how organized everything is, and see how we're knocking these roofs out in your neighborhood, right? So, uh, go by and see us in action. Right? Dude, that is awesome. I love that. 
Cool. So for the sake of time, we're gonna we're gonna skip this this uh, section here. But um, I want to encourage you guys to to next time you do get a timing objection or a price objection, we're gonna send this deck out. Try using one of these responses. See if it works for you, and let me know if it works for you. Um, you have my contact information uh, from the webinar. It's in the it's in the slide deck. So yeah, let us know how it's working for you. Really curious. Cool. Uh, so again, like I mentioned before, you know, we've got this thing called uh, suggested responses, which is super neat. Uh, and what we can do with suggested responses is you can actually uh, automate uh, the, the responses. So you can see below if somebody has a price objection, they can, you know, click the suggested response button right here and then surface up a price objection. So as a sales manager, you're able to actually jump in uh, and be able to provide uh, you know, your sales team, if they're using Hatch, uh, with the best practices for how they should respond to these objections. So we found this, since we implemented it a couple weeks ago, we found this to be incredibly successful for our customers uh, to really centralize their, um, um, how they handle these objections, especially when it comes to rehash. Uh, and really what it does for your business is uh, it's gonna allow you to implement those best practices uh, that your sales reps are seeing day to day in the field of how they communicate with homeowners and implement them across your entire business and, you know, avoid, you know, silly grammar mistakes or, or, or responses that are just not going to cut it in your business. So this is a, a great way to do that. Cool. So I'm going to real quick share with you guys how we work with job progress to make rehash, uh, basically put rehash on autopilot. So, You'll use job progress to uh, estimate and formulate that contract. And then when the contractor moves that contact to follow up or demo no sale, whatever that disposition is, it automatically kickstarts a conversation in Hatch. And so as soon as the lead responds to the campaign in Hatch, you're able to actually get an alert and then jump into Hatch on your phone, on your computer uh, to continue that conversation over text email and phone, and that conversation history is passed to the left, or excuse me, passed to job progress. So next thing I want to do is actually show you guys the power of Hatch as it relates to campaigns and rehash campaigns. So like I mentioned before, here's an example of a multi-touch rehash campaign where day one, we send a text, we drop a voicemail, we leave an email, Day two, we just send a text, day four, day five, et cetera. Um, we can automate that follow-up. So when a lead responds, they're taken out of this campaign. So they're not going to receive any more texts from you because you're going to be actually working that lead inside of Hatch. So this is an example of that actually happening here. Price is much more than we budgeted for. Here is that case where we can actually use the suggested response, price objection. Let's use the financing response and click send here and be able to handle that objection. We can actually call the lead. Uh, we can you know, email the lead, whatever. You can share the lead with a co with another uh, person in your organization. It's really, really powerful. So I want to show you guys how this actually works. I'm not going to bother you guys with text for the next, you know, 20 days. I just want to show you guys how this works with the initial launch of a campaign. Uh, let's just say you're working in job progress and somebody gets marked as follow-up. You would immediately send a text, email, and a voicemail. And then I'm also just going to send a follow-up tomorrow. So you'll get a text from me tomorrow. So I'm going to launch everybody that's on the webinar today, including the folks that registered. Um, so you guys are going to see the power of Hatch here. So all I'm going to do is this is all automated from your CRM, but you can also do this manually if you upload contacts or want to manually launch somebody into a campaign. But I just launched, I'm about to launch uh, 39 different uh, contacts, the folks that are joining us on the webinar today. And I'm going to drop them in this rehash job progress uh, campaign here. So. Again, day one, text, email, leave a voicemail, and then day two, uh, which uh, will be tomorrow, uh, you're gonna get a text message follow-up from us here. So I'm just gonna click launch. And within the next minute or so, as we do the Q&A, uh, everybody's gonna get a text message uh, and an email and also drop a voicemail. And you can see that all these people just in bulk uh, got dropped into a campaign. So again, this is really helpful for, for one-off campaigns as well. Like I mentioned before, the hailstorm story where there was a big hailstorm happening uh, and the 
contractor wanted to send a message to everybody that was in his database and say, you know, that he previously worked with and say, hey, you know, uh, we're here for you during the sales storm. Let us know if you want us to come by the home. So it actually helps with that communication and then they can manage all the communications inside of Hatch. So feel free to respond to the text. It'll drop right here in the board and I'll show you guys what it looks like as we go through the Q&A. Uh, so we're again, we're really happy to, uh, to work with you guys um, and, uh, and show you guys more about our products, Hatch, uh, job progress, um, feel free to drop in the Q&A uh, if you have any questions, uh, but let us know if you want to learn more about either of our companies. We're happy to reach out, show you guys our products in action. We work really well together, uh, so I encourage that you select both, and, and we're happy to show you guys the power of using Hatch with job progress. Uh, really, what, what, makes, what makes the difference is being able to set all your, your communications on autopilot, using job progress as your business hub, uh, moving, working a lead, and then as soon as they get put into a certain stage, it just automatically, without you thinking about it, sends a message from from the rep that's working it. It's it's just phenomenal. Uh, it saves folks so much time, and like I mentioned, on average, folks are seeing anywhere from a seven to ten percent increase in close rate, which for a lot of companies is really makes or breaks uh, the, uh, the 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 revenue there from in terms of you know tens of thousands to even some companies. The larger remodelers are making millions just from doing rehash. So a lot of good stuff here. Uh, Richard has a really good question. We're going to jump into the Q&A while, while the poll's running. Um, Richard asked uh, how well texts work for uh, B2B and B2C versus B2C. Um, that's a really good question, uh, Richard. Um, we found that texting really works for, it's worked really well for commercial. Um, not as high, I guess we could say, res response rate uh, is, is the metric there um, as, as residential. Um, but it certainly is a good way to, to get in contact with folks very quickly. Um, so we found success in that. Email is obviously the, tradi the traditional way of doing things, but uh, we found that some, some folks are seeing more success in, in the commercial space with, with texting than emailing. Well, what's also cool is you can do voicemail drops uh, with Hatch, and uh, we're happy to show you this in action, but uh, you can basically without the phone ringing, drop a voicemail in that person's uh, voicemail. So you can really get in front of them and that works really well on the commercial side too, at least recently. All right. We don't have any questions. I'm looking at the Q and A here. So if you have any questions guys, drop them into the Q and A. And again, we're happy to, uh, to show you guys our products in action. Um, if you want to schedule a job progress demo, we'll follow up, Hatch will follow up after this webinar, um, but go to jobprogress.com slash free demo. Uh, if you want to see Hatch in action, use hatchapp.com slash job progress. I think we might've lost Pete. I don't see his, uh, his camera on, but I'm really excited to have the opportunity to talk with you guys today. Uh, we're going to send out this deck. So all the strategies, the messaging strategies, the responses to objections, that's all going to be in your inbox. And we're going to make sure that, that you guys um, are able to, uh, to, to have the tools that you need from a messaging standpoint to implement them in your business. Uh, we've got a lot of great resources on, on our website uh, with respect to rehash and how to bet properly, manage, uh, have, properly manage communications and message homeowners. So I encourage you to check out our blog for that. Uh, um, excuse me. And so I just launched everybody in a campaign. So you should have uh, received a text or received a text uh, in the next minute or so. Uh, and I'll be uh, I'll be on here on, on this Hatch workspace. So if you respond, I'm happy to have a chat with you here. Um, but I want to thank everybody for joining again today. We're coming up on the hour. If there is no other questions, then I'll go ahead and uh, and uh, and close this webinar up. We do have one more question that came in. Uh, how do you do video email follow-up? That's a really good question here. So um, when you are working a lead inside of Hatch, oh, you're welcome, Sarah. When you're working a lead inside of Hatch, you can you know, easily drop a link to your Vidyard or, or Loom video. 
Um, so that's super easy. And you can drop images in the email as well. So like we can go into email, we can attach an, an image. So if you want to attach an image of the of the Loom video, for example, of the, the play button, the, the, the way they, they incentivize people to click on it, uh, you can do that as well. Um, it's really straightforward and pretty easy uh, to do that. We actually use Vidyard and Loom internally. It works pretty well. You're welcome, Madeline. And again, if I if I was a sales rep and I didn't know how to properly respond to a thank you, I can always just go to a suggested response and it'll be a you're welcome response. How about that? <laughs> all right, well, that's all I got. Uh, thanks everybody for joining. Looks like Pete just hopped back on. Uh, so we'll follow up with the deck. We'll follow up with the presentation. Thank you all. Thank you, Pete. I uh, might have had some connectivity issues there, but uh, we're excited to be talking with you guys further. Hope this was helpful. Uh, everybody take care. Have a good rest of your week.